the Joe Rogan experience. And so the concept is terraforming, right? That is, that's not going to happen. I think even Elon would tell you that's not going to happen in his lifetime. That's something that like generations from now we can think about. It's, that's, that's hard. So there's some sort of a domed civilization? Like what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Live in some kind of um, pressurized uh, compartment, some kind of pressurized habitat. So it, it, it'd be kind of like science fiction, like what, what you see in science fiction things where ships land on planets and people live inside the ships and you can't go outside unless you wear a suit. Unless you wear a suit, yeah. Wow. But hopefully there'll be plenty of plenty of room inside if once this thing grows to be really big. Uh, we also have to make sure it's really really well protected from radiation because even once you're on Mars, you have to worry about those GCRs and yeah. Yeah. Didn't he have an idea to like nuke the caps? He's yeah. Gonna, like nuke the solar po- uh, polar caps and. Yeah, I, you know it's not like anybody's really sitting around drawing up plans for that. That that was kind of like like if we had to do it, how could we do it? That's one mm. thing, you know, that came off the top of his head, but and what was that that was to raise the temperature or to change the atmosphere or that's to like melt the caps and then eject a lot of um uh gas into the atmosphere and, and beef up the Martian atmosphere. What a weird roll of the dice that would be. I don't think we're going to be trying that anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then what is the, the concept, like, in, in terms of terraforming, what kind of window of time would it take to turn that into a livable environment? That, you're starting to really uh, extrapolate it out pretty far, and it'd be pretty hard for me to give you a, a oh, timeline. Okay. So there's, like, giant leaps of technology that have to take place? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a big one. But it's as a proof of concept. It's, it's sort of, I mean, there is a theory, right, that yeah. you can alter the atmosphere and i mean mars has got enough gravity that if you could put enough gas into the atmosphere it would stick around um mm. kind of like you know it's it's got uh it, it's possible you're not going to get to one atmosphere pressure like 14.7 psi like we enjoy here but it might be enough now and their their gravity is what percentage of earth's uh it's about a third third yeah wow so Remember, right you would you would definitely experience a lot of the same issues that you have if you go to the space station. So if you wanted to go from Mars back to Earth, there would definitely be some sort of an adjustment period. Yeah. Um, it, you know, the really interesting thing is, like, we know we have a lot of data. We know what happens at, at in zero G because we have a lot of us that have been up to the space station and uh, Skylab and Mir and all that. And we have tons of data at 1G because all of us every day live in 1G. We don't really have any data in between. Mm. So the question is, is a half a G half as good? Or maybe it's like 80% as good. Right. And, and, and so is it linear or is it nonlinear? We don't know. Mm. Uh, and that's why if we send people and we live on, on the moon or we go to Mars and we live on Mars and we have data, like on the moon it's about a sixth of the Earth's gravity. Uh, so we'll get points in between. And then we can figure out if this thing is – there's a lot of stuff that happens to you – that may be completely solved with even just the smallest amount of G. Hmm. But we don't know. Well, that's interesting, right? We don't know. Yeah, because zero G is an issue. We don't know how much of an issue one-third G is. Yeah. Now, what about food? Like, what are they going to do with food on Mars? Are they going to have to s- fly all the ingredients out, everything out? Once gonna... you start talking about missions that are that long, carrying all your food with you, bringing it all becomes mass prohibitive. Um, you know, you just got to take so much and it, all, yeah. and, and that just means you need that, that much bigger of a rocket. And it just, after a while it gets, you know, to the point where it doesn't work. What's all the f- food for the rest of your life, essentially? Yeah. So we're probably, if we're talking about like living for a long time on Mars or even deep space missions, we got to grow food. Uh, so we could probably plants hydroponically. Like the Matt Damon movie. Yeah. Yeah. How realistic was that? You know, that movie is really pretty good. Pretty um, good movie. Yeah, there was, uh, I met the author, uh, the guy that wrote, Andy Weir, the guy that wrote the book, and I told him uh, that I, I really didn't uh, like his book. <laughs> <laughs> you told him that? Yeah. What and he's like, he like, why? Was it because, like, there's not really enough dynamic pressure in a Martian windstorm to knock the antenna off the roof? I'm like, nah, I was fine with that. He's like, well, it was because we didn't have enough redundancy in the comm system, and that's not really realistic. I'm like, nah, no. Nope. He goes, well, why didn't you like it? I'm like, well, listen, I have a long day of work at SpaceX. I come home. I open up the book before I go to bed, and I'm reading this, like, 
okay, I got 62 souls and I got to cover 3,000 kilometers and I've got 52 moles of nitrogen hydroxide, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's like I'm still at work. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't want that. I want to like, I want some escapism. I want to like go home and read a romance novel or something. Well, that's not his fault though. <laughs> no. Well, was, so he, you just busted his balls. I busted his balls. Yeah. That's, um, it's interesting though that he got it close yeah, yeah, he did a great job. That's actually. a, a tr I mean, for some, does he have a background in that? Yeah, I think he does. I oh, think he's an engineer okay. or something. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, but what that movie was terrifying. Like the <laughs> idea that you can get stuck up yeah. there. The only part of the movie, which I don't think was in a book, that was not r realistic at all, was when he cuts his glove and does the Iron Man thing. He's oh, like, he's yeah. like flying back to the spaceship. You can't really control it. That some you'd, be, Hollywood you'd spin out of control if you tried that. You'd also need a big hole to really get enough propulsion, and then that your suit would deflate. I mean, it's just that's just not going to work. <laughs>